Welcome to this presentation on Atlas 5 for Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. Today I'm going to do a clean install inside the Microsoft produced Hyper-V of 2012 on the Contoso domain. What I've done so far is simply create on the C drive a folder called Atlas of which I have the, the build number I'd like to install and some license keys that I'm going to use when I activate the product. Before I begin, I'm just going to confirm the where the AX AOS is running. So I'm going to have a look in the admin tools, client configuration, just to confirm the server name and port number that AX is, is running on. So AX is running on connection tab, server name AX 2012-A, port number 2712, the default port. So that's really what I need to use Atlas or to configure Atlas correctly. So I'm going to run the installation. So through the obligatory acceptance of license terms, I'm going to do a, a demonstration installation which means I want the entire product installed inside this Hyper-V. Normally you would choose the client or the server depending on uh, the context of where you are. Decide where I'd like Atlas installed. I'm quite happy with C Drive Atlas. And the installation will begin. So this is going to install uh, two Windows services, one for the Atlas licensing service uh, which was where you would put in the concurrent connection keys the actual data can, uh, data service to support AX 2012 um, and then there's client components which is a desktop application to manage single sign-on and then there's obviously uh, add-ins for the Microsoft applications Excel, Word, PowerPoint and Outlook so the installation is finished uh, there are a few things I need to configure first before I can begin using the product. First that will come up will be uh, just setting the AX 2012 service connection. So the Atlas client connects to an Atlas Windows service and I need to set that up here. So I'm going to call my service name Contoso. So I'll call it AX 2012 and it's obviously going to be it's going to be listing on port number 9006 so this is what the A Atlas client is trying to connect to the data platform in this case is 2012 the server name it's running on is 2012-A and AX is listening on port number 92712 uh, service name, where is my Atlas licensing service running on? I'll put this as a service name and port number 9005 simply as a default and I'll add this window service. If I have a look in my services you'll see what's been installed now. So there is the Atlas service which we have just configured here, uh, which is uh, running. It has installed on the local system. I do notice in this image, AX itself is running as Contoso Administrator. So I am going to stop that service and just run on under the same privileges as, as AX for now. start that service so last I'm going to uh, just configure the Atlas licensing service 
what I need to do without this licensing service is just configure what Atlas services it should be managing. Uh, Atlas 5 is a multi connection, so we can have many services for AX4 2009 2012 uh, and soon any database. So I'm just going to go to my configuration and I'm going to add in Six is the Atlas service I like the licensing service is going to manage uh, and I'm going to save that. In the Atlas licensing service uh, this is the UI that's uh, required when you also need to paste in your concurrent license keys if you're going to activate that way. My concurrent keys, there's two boxes, I put in my designer and my standard uh, of which I prepared earlier today. So I have a designer license, so copy that. And I have a concurrent user, or oh, sorry, standard license. And I'll click save. Now this isn't going to change anything. This information about online users and concurrent, maximum concurrent users, that's not retrieved until the first actual logon and activation. Uh, so just to recap, I have no online users yet. The Atlas licensing service is managing the Atlas data service running on port number 9006 and I've pasted in my concurrent keys. So in my services I shall just restart that and I shall start my data service so that's done so finally my client configuration there will be a few things I need to set up here also so on my connection, the original installation, I can rename that if I wish uh, and it's just coming in as local host, uh, which is fine. I am actually going to set some things here. Instead of local host, I do want to call this AX2012. Uh, and I'd like to set up some paths as to where to save my private save queries, the shared save queries, and a data source list I'd like to load up at startup. So my saved queries, uh, which are my private queries. In this case, I'm just going to make a subfolder in here called private. My shared query location is should really be on a network folder location where uh, these will be the queries which are used in common for my installation for the particular AX I'm connected to. I'm going to make one here and call this shared. And uh, just for me I'd like to also when I do log in as I'm a designer the data source list I'd like to use by default is this one here. So OK that. Save these things we start and then we shall attempt to connect. What I'm expecting to happen next is on my login and I can do a domain or not. I do expect to have to activate this license key. So it's telling me my copy of Atlas requires activation. So here I have the choice of, I shall fill in my details. And if I'm given a named user key, whether it be standard or designer, 
I could paste this key in here. I could opt to use one of the concurrent designer keys or one of the standard keys. If I use these two down below, uh, then I don't need to actually paste in anything. In this case, I do actually have a name user key I'd like to use. I have that prepared earlier also. Of which I shall activate. So this is going out to our website here in Australia, globesoftware.com.au, to activate this license key. It's doing this through the Atlas licensing service. So it's that Windows service which requires an internet connection whenever an activation is required. Completed successful. Uh, so now login will continue. What I can do here is simply customize this to show the Atlas client all the time. So the first installation or the first time you use this, Atlas will be uh, gathering some AOT properties, the tables and fields of the tables that are in the data source list. They will they are cached. Uh, so the first time these things, or you, you install the product, it might take a few minutes to uh, derive that correct list. That's done 35 data sources preloaded. So that's just the AOT properties of those, uh, including labels of those particular data sources. So finally, now when I go into an Office product, I shall choose Excel first. There will be one final step which requires accepting the add-in. That's done. Atlas now appears in the Excel menu. And if I just load up Word, then you'll see for each of the Office apps that final confirmation uh, is still required. And there it is in Word. Uh, and PowerPoint and Outlook obviously need to be done also. So that's the installation. Uh, so Alice has a single sign-on uh, to all the Office apps and it's managed by this desktop application down here. Can be configured to log in automatically when you log in. Uh, and essentially that's it. And I shall just give this a quick test by running a quick list report. So I'm just going to choose uh, customers, the columns in my report. Go and get the customer name from the global address book as well. And uh, that's now done. So this data is live from AX when I refresh. I go and get my customer list again. Add one more, customer group 10. I'm going to change the filters of this report. Do filter on customer group. Thank you for watching.